Welcome back to a new episode here in Suave. This is the last episode of the logo animation series in which I animated your logos using DaVinci Resolve. As you can see, these two logos, they're pretty similar. The second one is the one that we I redid to show the tutorial on how I did it. So yeah, it took me a little bit longer to make this one because I ran into a bunch of other stuff that I had to do. And yeah, so anyways, so we're gonna start first of all by having our media in a background in a merge node because the first thing that we need to do is to recreate the shape, the that yellow and red lines that we have in the middle. So the first thing that I did was um, using a paint, if I'm not wrong, I added a paint node on top to the background node, which was invisible. And using the stroke section, I adjusted a couple things with the size also first. And I first made the color red. So basically what you do is you make sure that it's in the right position there so that you can see it that's on top of everything else. And then readjusting it. And we basically just follow through with the shapes. But And I'm just speeding up through the pro through the process because you don't want to see 10 minutes of just that right uh, so yeah just making sure and of course it's not gonna be the same because of the sharp edges and all that stuff but yeah you get the idea is to be able to replicate it sort of um, so then the next thing was to duplicate that so copy and paste it and we're gonna create the yellow one using that one as our um, base mode and we're gonna change the size of the yellow one to be a little bit smaller so it fits within the red one so yeah so then after you we make sure uh, then we use the color picker to try to replicate the same colors that the actual logo had and the animation is done with the write on animation section so basically we always create the first one um like that and we're not gonna see it right now but yeah on frame zero and then on frame 95 it's the end so the line is gonna write on using that uh setting right and then the last thing was to add a transform node to this section so that we can adjust the size of it um and then add, add an image plane 3d so that we can take it into the 3d scene mode after this what I did was I duplicated these so that we cre could create the different sections, the copy ones that came after, and adjusting the rotation points, creating a simple keyframe animation for that, uh, making them sort of like rotate a little bit from the side all the way to the middle. And then we also offset the time of it so that they don't all happen at the same time but take a few keyframes uh to sort of like sort of like an echo effect right so the same thing with the time offset we create a keyframe so it goes from one minus um minus 1.87 and just a quickly quick like jump in the time offset section that's basically just copying that that one from the original the keyframe from the original one um after that and yeah you don't have to do it you can just leave it at minus one point whatever you want also if you're doing that uh it doesn't have to be perfect but it's up to you you can play around with it and then we add i made a couple more copies of it and the last thing that i did for that one was the translation so the trans the c offset is what's gonna adjust the depth of it so i played around with it and i put the same settings that i had in the original which was minus 0.14 actually i think it might have been 0.14 but yeah it's pretty much the same it doesn't matter and then i reduplicated that same portion and i added a second full section so it looks sort of like a warm so like a longer version of it right um after that is ready um basically the next thing would be to add our base again which is the main um logo and we're gonna animate the opacity of it so that it just appears uh, sort of like fades in into the scene like that and that's the actual last um, the main base the original base logo right 
and then we're gonna position this one all the way in the back so like after all these uh the tunnel that we have sorry got my coffee right here so after we have that we that's this is basically how the camera will sort of like look into it go through the different sections of it and we have to adjust the distance, be, distance between these because of the camera um the camera angle like the point of view that it has if it is too wide it's gonna look too big right but yeah that was pretty much it after that was set up the next thing that i had um done was basically ad adding the camera portion of it and animating the camera so we add the camera node into our video right so after adding the camera to our merge 3d here we're gonna start by animating the camera in the adding the translation sections and we're adding the 3d node so that we can see what the camera is seeing so the first thing is we're gonna adjust the position of the camera sort of like aligning it trying to align it right with the middle or one of the holes that we have right there so that when it goes through it looks like it's sort of like going through the tunnel right and yeah so then the next thing is um yeah i forgot so we're gonna create a keyframe for our depth so like this z or z and the y and the y is also because later on we're gonna adjust the little uh precision keyframe for that yeah so then we just bring it all the way forward until we can see our main logo and then we're gonna just adjust a few little things in the keyframes to make sure that the camera is positioned in the right place there and in order to not have to move our camera again backwards and move everything back what i did was i adjusted the angle of view of the camera so i created a keyframe for that and if you adjust the focal length and both of those with a keyframe you're able to sort of like add that uh, effect that it becomes smaller so the next point is to add our ribbon or i don't know what it's called and for that in order to animate this what i did was i used a polygon mask and i basically drew it using the stroke um, mode i guess and i had to do this and it took me a long time because all the little details i didn't want to leave anything behind um, so after you do that you basically just duplicate that and you're gonna rotate it here using the Y and you just do it 180 degrees so now you have both portions of it and then you have to adjust a few little things because both sides of the ribbon are not exactly the same right um, so after making sure that everything is covered by by our mask okay so then after that we have after we have our ribbon we are gonna adjust the image we're gonna add an image plane to it so that it that it becomes part of the 3d scene again right um, after we have that we're gonna see how the ribbon animates and to animate it I forgot to mention it and I didn't put it here it seems um, I animated it in a way that I just adjusted the length of the polyline stroke mode in order so you, that you can able to animate that then the last part was to animate the text portion of it and for that i added transform node so that i can put it in the right place on the scene and then adding a tv node that you can find it in your node section and by animating uh creating keyframes for these different points as you see in here the scan lines and the vertical um i animated those and i also used the frequency animator there and after a couple of frames i basically made them all go back to normal so that they are not affecting the text anymore and that it looks like um like nothing had happened basically and then the next thing I, was i added a rectangle because i didn't want the effect to be shown on the whole um the whole portion of where there's no text right so i only wanted this section to be and the actual text section to be affected by this effect and then the last thing was just to connect all of these nodes together on a new merge node so that we can see the final result and these are this is the final result 
um, of how I made this logo animation for the Paracord Court Academy. If you want to learn how to do that, you can check out their channel. I'm going to try to link it somewhere in this video. Um, yeah, so I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you at least got some ideas of the capabilities and of the things that you can do using DaVinci Resolve. And yeah, let me know if you like this series and if you will want to uh, get a similar series or any ideas that you have for content in the future. Um, yeah, so I hope to see you in the next video here in Swabi.